Hi everyone, I'm Anjali, aka Geek Girl Bookworm. I'm here today to uh, show you around myminifactory.com. Uh, it's a great new-ish website uh, that centralizes all uh, sculpts and art prints for 3D printing and allows you as the painter, as the collector, as the printer to find really cool stuff to download. In these videos, I'll be showing you the website. I'll be showing you their new My Mini Factory Plus subscription service. I'll also be showing you how to uh, support your miniature before you go into printing to get the best results. And I'll be showing you uh, what the printed miniature will look like at the end and get it painted up with some special exclusive products that you get from the My Mini Factory subscription service. So myminifactory.com is a really simple to use website. You get a free account with it and you can search through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of STL files. And they are anything from D&D, RPG miniatures to terrain, to fashion and accessories, jewelry, uh, upcycling, sort of cool, weird ideas. There's loads of stuff on there. It's not just for mini painters, but I'm gonna focus mainly on miniature painting because hey, that's what I am. So let's take a look at the website. So this is myminifactory.com. Uh, it's very easy, simple website to use, um, very clear. As you can see at the top, the banner is the My Mini Factory Plus uh, for February. Uh, I'm gonna, in a separate video, take you through that, have a look at the STL file that we got for free from that and actually talk you through the subscription service a little bit more. But that's in a separate video. Today is just an introduction to My Mini Factory and for supporting your prints. So the website has, as I said, loads and loads and loads of different things for you to explore. If you go into the top, into the explore, you'll see that we've got stuff for tabletop and fan art, toys and home. So many things. It's got a little bit of something for everyone. So if you're looking to um, print something for something that's broken, you're probably going to find it somewhere in here, either upcycling or home and garden. Uh, I know that uh, I have printed off on my PLA and the three model. Uh, attachments when I've broken something, I can normally find something to print off um, to fix that which has been a lifesaver. It means I haven't had to throw anything away. I've been able to upcycle it. I've been able to, 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 re, to fix it, which is in this day and age where things just get thrown out, a new thing bought. It's really love to, lovely to be able to do that again. As I said, I'm going to be mainly focusing on tabletop stuff because that's mainly what I print out. So here we have characters and terrain, vehicles and premium files. And these files can be anything from free to sort of, you're looking to, from like $3, $5, $8, $10. It's completely up to the artist, what they put, how much they put that up for. And they get 90% of those sales. So my mini factory only takes a 10% of the, the sale of that. And that's the upkeep of the website and all the behind the scenes sort of maintenance that you do to store all of these files for the artists. And it's a really great way to support your artists and your favorite sculptors. And it's also a really cool way to get really cool stuff for a fraction of the price that you normally would if it was already pre-printed. Um, for an example, uh, Creepy Tables are an amazing um, EU-based uh, sculpting house. They make some incredible busts. Um, but unfortunately, here in the UK, with the release of Brexit, getting stuff from the EU to the UK is no longer um, as cheap and as easy as it used to be. But Creepy Tables have got some of their STLs up on here at the moment, um, which means that I can get the bus that I like and print them out myself instead of having to pay an extortionate amount for shipping and customs into the UK now, um, which is awesome. It means that I still get to support a company that I love, but it also means that I don't have to go through the hassle of Brexit. <sighs> Sad rant over. Anyway, let's have a look in more detail at the website. So we've got a whole host of different things here. Um, and as you can see, some of them are for sale and some of them are free. So you've got here this, this set of Battle Brothers, um, very Space Marine looking. Uh, it's $18 for those. 
but some of these are free to download. And there are loads in which to just look through. So if you're just here to browse, it's, it's a really great website for that. And if you're looking for something more specific, you can always do a search for it. So if, for example, I am looking to uh, get a D&D character, I'm going to look for uh, a rogue. So first of all, it will show me uh, just a selection uh, of ones that have high viewing and are ones that will cost you here at the top. And underneath, there's a lot of uh, free sculpts, so you can have a look through. You can, it shows you a selection and you can go through to look at more. It also shows you who the sculpts are by. So if you have a favorite sculptor um, and you're looking for something specific from them, but you can't remember what it's called, you can type in the rogue and be like, oh yeah, that's who I was after, that person. And you can go and see that their store. I'll show you that as well in a moment. But as you can see, as you go through, there are lots of different options available to you. And it's just about finding the one that speaks to you. And if it's D&D, the one that suits your character. Uh, dice heads are quite fun. Uh, if you haven't looked up dice heads, I highly recommend uh, looking into their Patreon and also their uh, joining their newsletter. They are just fun, silly uh, sculpts, and I really like them. So I'm going to look at this one, which is The Bogard Rogue by Duncan Shadow. Uh, Duncan is a great sculptor. He's one of my... Uh, one of my favourites. I, I am one of his patrons as well, but he has not asked me to do this. I'm doing this off my own back. But he makes really cool, massive uh, prints, but also he does these really cool anthropomorphic D&D uh, &D characters that I adore. So, for an example, some lovely little mouse cultists. How cute are these? I have these printed and I'm going to be making it. I've already got half of them painted up. I'm going to be making a diorama with those. He also does really lovely bases. These are great for 3D printing, very easy to print out. Um, and they come in various sizes, which you can easily scale up and down. Uh, and they make great bases for your D&D &D characters. Uh, I have all of his different various terrain bases uh, and I print them out as and when I need them, uh, which is awesome. They're very cheap. So $4 for a set of uh, six 25 mil bases, all different, two 50 mil and one 80 mil, uh, all of them different for $4. It's, yeah, you can't, you know, you can't get better than that really. So when you find your favorite sculptor, you can hit the follow button, which I'm pretty sure I just pressed, but it seems to have unfollowed me again. So when you like someone, you can click the follow button. It means that you, you're able to store them in your own uh, library area, which I will also show you. So when you make your account, you get your library. Your library will show you all of your purchases everything that you've paid for, whether free or with money. Uh, it will also show you who you are following. So here are all of, it's still not showing Duncan. Oh no, there he is. Um, it will show you all of your sculptors that you are following. So if you know that they've got something new coming out soon, uh, you can find them easily. So Creepy Tables are the ones I spoke about who are in the EU. I got this one. So this print was eight, dollars 99. Uh, this model itself is around uh, 40 to 50 euros plus shipping plus customs now. Um, 8.99 is a far better price for me. Now when you've bought something it will always show up here as downloadable so you don't just download it once it stays in your library and you can re-download it. It also means that when you go to here you're not accidentally buying it twice. You can add it to collections, you can comment on it, you can share your own uh, prints of it and your own um, paint jobs as well. So it becomes part of a community. 
which is really nice. It's nice that you have the ability to contact the artists and tell them how much you like their sculpts, show them what you've created with their sculpts. Um, that's a really nice part of this. And it's a part that they're trying to build uh, a bit more of at the moment, trying to build that community with the fans and with the artists. Um, and that is really essential uh, at the moment, especially when there's like so much being shown to you. So yeah, on your profile, that's me. Um, these are the people I'm following. I don't have any followers, but that's because I don't make anything. So why would anyone follow me? Um, and I haven't made any collections or anything yet. And this sign here means that this particular artist is also a member of uh, the My Mini Plus subscription service. So they also pay to be part of the subscription. Uh, I'm not going to go into, as I said, I'm not going to go into any detail about that at the moment. We're going to um, talk about that in a later video. So let's have a look at my library. So once I've ordered something, it all goes here. This page is objects that have been shared with me. This page is um, people who I've been a patron of, and they've given me the links to previous Patreon um, rewards here. So I've got them always stored. If I lose them anywhere else, I've always got them here. And they get automatically updated as well. So if the artist uh, has done some free supports and it's new, I get a little notification to say that there's a new thing to download. Shared by My Mini Factory. This is the um, January and February My Mini Factory Plus uh, free STLs that you get every month. And I will show you those later. But we're going to be looking at uh, this particular one. So this is my printed obsession. It's the Armoured Female Human. Uh, this one I got in the Boxing Day sales. And I got it because I was really after a miniature that I could make a little bit bigger and focus on doing some skin tones and doing some non-metallic metals and just having a bit of fun with it. And I wanted something that allowed me to upscale the model so I'd have a big scale of a really cool, interesting mini. And that's the cool thing about 3D printing is that you don't have to just have it at 28 millimeter. If you make a really cool, if you find a really cool mini, you can print it at whatever size your printer allows you to print it at. This particular model, the files that you download come as um, sort of modular, so you get you can print each of the each of the parts out separately, meaning that you can print it out much much bigger than if it's one full thing. And also, uh, it comes pre-supported and unsupported. Pre-supports are great uh, as long as you're keeping the model at exact not exactly, but if you're keeping it at hundred percent scale or just a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. If you start um, making it um, much, much bigger or much, much smaller, then the pre-support, it doesn't really work. And the reason for that is if you downscale the pre-supports, they're going to start attaching themselves to other parts of the miniature that they haven't been designed to because of the way it's printed, which means that when you try and remove it, it's either going to be really difficult or you're actually going to take out part of the miniature as well. And if you go too big, the supports, maybe supporting one area, but because you've increased that whole um, surface area, it's not got the, the right amount of support for that entire surface area, which means that you can get foul print skin. No one wants foul prints because you then have to start all over again. And it's a waste of time, energy and resin. And resin is expensive, so you don't want to waste it. So today I am going to show you how to do some upscaling of this miniature and how to support it and then in the next video i'll show you the finished print and we can get started with putting some paint on it so you download it just as you normally would and it downloads onto your computer and then you have to have a slicing program or on your computer installed onto your computer most of your 3d printers come with a slicing program um, i prefer to use chitubox it's a free program for slicing. I find it very easy to use, very intuitive, and I've not had really had any issues with the supports that it gives me. Uh, some people don't like it, uh, and some people prefer to use the one that their printer has told them to use, 
and that's absolutely fine. But I'm going to show you how to support using DigiBox. So once you've downloaded your model and you're ready to start, um, you need to find. Ooh, let me just open that properly. You need to get your sculpt ready, she says, thinking that she had it ready and didn't. So that's my bad there. After da 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 da, email armor. No. Oh, curses. Where is it? <gasps> Lost it. Let's just download it. Yep, I'm totally, totally fine and definitely a professional about these things. Talk amongst yourself, class. Hmm. Okay. Let's do it a different way. Right. Okay, we'll do it this way. Hit the download button. And I'm going to download it again. So, so you can see that you get different various files within here. So we get the body, the full, both fists. So it's all um, extracted in various ways. So if I wanted to make it like massive, I could do so uh, by putting putting the body in its own and the two fists on their own. I could scale up really, really big if I wanted to. But I'm going to do the whole thing as one. There we go. So there she is. So this is her at 100%. She's 32 millimeter model and there's her at 100 percent i'm going to make her a bit bigger so first of all i'm going to scale her up probably to like 150. so she's gone from 32 millimeter to just under 50 millimeter i might change that actually just see how she is if i go to 52. There we go, so now she's 52. And the way she's lying here would mean that she would print out pretty quick because this here is the build plate. The closer the, the very last layer is to the build plate, the quicker that the print happens. But it does mean is that when I put supports on this, all of this area is gonna be supported. Pain in the bum to clean up. And it's gonna, I'm gonna probably lose a little bit of this um, detail as well. So I, what I really want is to put it at an angle. Something along those lines. And I wanna double check it to make sure it sits on the bill plate. And put it in the center, which it is. You know, if it's not on the bill plate, because parts of this will go red. So as an example, there, that's off the bill plate. I don't want that. So I want to centerize it. And then I just want to double check that everything is on the bill plate. The reason that I put it at a slight angle is that I don't want to put it flat on the base. This here is a very large flat area. And when you're printing, that's going to cause a vacuum, which is going to uh, highly increase your um, chances at getting a foul print. And the reason for that is, as it's going back up, it's pulling itself out of the resin that hasn't been cured, and it's sort of making a sucking thing. And if that if that 
uh, area is too thick, too heavy, it's going to pull it off of the build plate. Um, and you won't know that that's happened until you know, hour number five, when finally you can start seeing it come above the resin vat, and uh, it's not there. And uh, it's very irritating when that happens, and it happens to everyone. But we're going to put this at a bit of an angle. Now, obviously, the higher up the last uh, layer is, the longer it's going to take. But that is sort of the compromise you have to make. Do you want it to print really, really quickly, but you might spend more time cleaning it up? You might lose some detail in your um, using your supports. Or do you want to take have it take longer and therefore you've got less time in the cleanup part? Um, I'm happy with it taking longer. So I've got less time having to clean it up, um, mainly because the cleanup is where I make some errors. So once I've got the right angle and it's at the right scale and I've made sure it's in the centre of the plate, I want to put some supports in. So the top tab in the right hand corner, very right hand corner, is our supports. Thing I like about Gigibox is I like their um, auto support system. Most people don't, uh, but I like the ability to put all the supports in and then go in and edit them as I desire. So I use light supports and I use a lift of three and a half millimeters. So you can see here that this is no longer on the build plate. So this is all going to be supported um, with a lift. It means that um, you're not going to get any sort of weird misshaped bits here. You can do anything from a zero where it's flat on the build plate to sort of five millimeters, probably the most you want to be um, printing them off at, especially with miniatures. So yeah, three and a half for me is a good compromise. And then you hit the plus platform and this automatically gives you a whole load of supports for your miniature. It doesn't give you all of them, it's not perfect. So you're gonna have to go in and you're gonna have to add some of your supports yourself. And then how you find out that you need supports is you start looking underneath it. All these red bits here are areas that need supporting. And as you move it around, you see this sort of island sort of being made. And what you're looking for is where it is at the darkest part where you need to start adding a couple of supports just to help it out obviously you don't want to go crazy and put like all the supports in the world in because you've got to clean it up afterwards but you want to start and make sure that you've got the right amount of supports in the right areas so here places like here Might want to just put a little support in and inside here as well. And this does take your own judgment. It does take a little bit of getting used to the program and also seeing your own prints and working out where you've gone right or wrong. But for the most part, it's pretty good at picking where to put your supports. Now, if you put a support somewhere where you don't think it's actually needed, you can use this button here to delete a support. So you highlight it and then click it again, and it's gone. Also, if you're adding supports and you think, oh, that's a little bit close to the actual model, and you don't want it too close to the model because um, it can get attached to the model depending on the size of it. So you can actually edit your supports as well. So you can move them around, have them come further out, have them go further in, wherever you want them really. But for me, that looks pretty good. And after you're done, Add in the supports to your model. 
you want to go back and slice it. And the slicing, it will work out how many layers it has and give you an estimate of how long it's going to take to um, actually print out. And it is just an estimate. Your printer gives you a little bit better estimate. Um, but yeah, I always sort of add an extra half an hour on. <laughs> um, I've never been surprised by having one finish earlier than expected. So there we go. So I keep all of these uh, the same as like the standard default setting. You can mess around with them a bit more, um, get a more detailed print that takes longer time. Um, and sometimes the these times need to be changed depending on if you're using a um, water washable um, resin. They have a very different uh, exposure time and um, you do need to amend this information prior to that. So do check the labels on your bottle to make sure that these are the right ones. Uh, but for the any cubic resin that I use, these default settings are fine. And you can see here, it's going to take about six, just over six hours. So I'm going to say it's probably going to take about six and a half hours. Um, and after you do that, say, OK, save. And you want to make sure that, so I use a Photon S, so I make sure that the file type I'm saving under is the Photon S slicer. Um, and I just save it onto my computer, transfer it to my memory stick for my printer, and then set it printed. Nice and easy. So while that is saving, I will um, get it printed between now and my next video so I can show you the finished result. Um, I'm also going to put it onto a printed 3D base, uh, probably that, one of those scrapyard ones that I showed previously from Duncan Shadows, um, a 50 mil base because I've put it up to a 52 millimeter model so a 50 mil base will be perfectly fine for it and uh, yeah I look forward to showing you the result um, it will be fully cured and removed of supports um, so I'll get to show you like in detail what it looks like and then we'll get started on the painting so before we do that one we'll also have a look at my manufacturing plus because there's some stuff that I'll be using for the painting that uh, comes with the subscription. Yeah, my mini factory. It's a really cool, simple, easy to use website where you can find free STLs, but also really, really reasonably priced um, premium STLs from really cool artists and sculptors who have got huge amounts of talent. So you should definitely um, give it a look and start printing and painting some really, really cool stuff. Yeah, that's the first of the series done. Nice, short 30 minute video. Thank you uh, for coming along and for watching. Please do uh, like and subscribe. Uh, let me know any feedback you have on this. If anything else you want to see about my mini factory uh, i'll be talking about them for the next three months so it's loads of stuff to cover let me know what you would be interested in seeing me do but yeah next up we have uh, a paint session for the armored female human yay see you all later bye